Hey, what's up, Troublemakers? What you're about to see is a little bit of footage from the time that Vince and I got to go to a very early screening of a movie called Blinded by the Light. At the time, we didn't know anything else except that it was based on the music of Bruce Springsteen and there's these test screenings in LA all the time. We decided to keep the vlog footage until the weekend of the release, which is which is now. At the time of posting this video, the movie had just released this weekend in the United States. It kind of ended up not being a vlog because I, I got so emotionally affected by it. Racism on both extremes, really bad extreme to uh, just very subtle things were represented in the movie in ways that people who didn't grow up with it could never understand. A lot of people saw on Instagram my, my kind of like emotional breakdown. Having someone who actually grew up that way write the story and then to see another person of color direct the movie and then to see it translated on screen, it's a really fucking fantastic movie. In my opinion, this is a very, very good movie, truly great movie, very organic representation of person of color, just their journey and it really hit home to me. I grew up as a, a Korean American kid in Indiana and though life wasn't like totally horrible, it was just a very different experience. Music has saved my life in more than one instance. So this movie really hit home for me. So what you're about to see is the bits and pieces of what would have been a vlog. And then at the end of the vlog part, I'm gonna put the whole like eight or nine minutes of the speech that the director and the writer of the movie, whose life is based on, had. Uh, Cause I, I thought it was really great. It shouldn't be cut up or anything. So you'll see like a little bit in the vlog part, just kind of a montage of the evening. And then after all that, the, the whole speech, if you're at all interested in supporting people of color, if you like the music of Bruce Springsteen or all of the above, I really heavily suggest you go see Blinded by the Light in theaters now. It's amazing and I'm gonna cry again, so I'm gonna stop. So it's a little dark and we weren't gonna vlog this because we were just at a screening of Blinded by the Light, which features a lot of Bruce Springsteen music. They made us dress up and we didn't know why and we thought maybe it's a secret premiere. Yeah, I had no idea. But it's not a premiere, we're just seeing the movie. But then they just invited everyone here to the after party. So I guess we'll be vlogging from the after party. What I like to do is take people and these people you might not know very much about and don't really see on cinema screen and take them from the margins and put them right in the mainstream. But at the same time, it's also very much about that eureka moment where music touches you and means something for you. And you suddenly realize that music can help you in so many ways through hard times in your life. And I'm sure all of us have been through that. I grew up in a town called Luton. A couple of years ago, it was voted the crackiest town in the country. Um, but what made it particularly special is that it was actually voted that by the people who live there. And, um, and then we'll all see all of you over at the sunset and um, sharing your unique and Bruce moments with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. be listening to our music before you start getting confused and hating yourself. I listen to everything. I can feel it all right here. It's like Bruce knows everything I've ever felt. Everything I've ever wanted. My poems, they're not brilliant, but they're mine. We just walked out of the screening of Blinded by a Light. Yeah. I was so blown, it was like a, I don't know how to explain it, it's like an emotion stretched across like two hours. I've never related with the movie from beginning to end so much. Like, and it was full of Bruce Springsteen music, you know? Yeah, I forgot how many songs Bruce wrote that other people made famous or made more popular, I guess, I don't know. This is the difference when a person of color writes a movie. It can tie all the things together the right way, and I think this really did it. Anyway, nice little bonus on everything. The director invited all of us to the after party. So we're on our way there right now. We're gonna explore and party. Yeah, we've not seen the film that much in terms of the public. We saw it at Sundance, obviously, and since then, you know, we've not really had that opportunity. Um, so this is very exciting for all of us. And just a few words, because, you know, you're going to see the film. But um, for me, you know, it's always very important to have a reason why you 
choose the film you make as a director. And also as a director, every director wants people to watch their film and go, oh yeah, that director made this film. Like it's recognizably that person's film. And I hope that you feel that for this. And the reason I say that is what I like to do is take people, characters, families, people you might not know personally or don't know much about and don't really see on cinema screen and take them from the margins and put them right in the mainstream for like a huge global audience so people can sort of really get into their lives and really appreciate who they are. So that's what I try to do with this film. But at the same time, it's also, it's very much about that eureka moment where music touches you and means something for you. And you suddenly realize that music can help you in so many ways through hard times in your life. And I'm sure all of us have been through that. Um, I really uh, couldn't have made this film without British whiskey, obviously. Um, this is Bruce Van der Nest. Exactly. One, two, three. Bruce. <laughs> so what happened was, um, I'm going to introduce you to Sam Brass and Bernard, um, who, like me, is from Britain. And we were both uh, big Bruce fans. And he wrote this book. And I said, the only way that this book could be made into a film is if we meet and talk to Bruce. Because without Bruce's involvement, we haven't got a film. And we were uh, very fortunate because uh, in 2010, Bruce came to England for the premiere of The Promise. And uh, I got invited to the BFI where the, where the, where the um, premiere was. And I took Safras with me and we stood on the other side of the carpet like this and we kind of waited for Bruce to come. He was coming around, it was really exciting. And then we both had our cameras like this. So that as he walked past, we'd both be in the same frame as Bruce. <laughs> and we were like waiting like this. And his camera was going, oh my God, he's coming, he's coming. Oh my God, be cool, be cool. And Safra was on the other side. And an amazing thing happened. As Bruce came round, he saw Safras and recognised him from his 150 shows that he'd been to and came over and said, I read your book, it's really beautiful. And Safras, of course, was delighted and very excited and started um, hyperventilating. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, you read it, you actually read it. Um, and Bruce was very cool. And then I jumped right in and said, Oh my God, what are you going to do with him? You've got to really help us. We really want to support him. And I was like, really uncool. But I, <laughs> I did sort of make it very clear that I know better than I beckon, and this is really a great film, and we really want to, we want to do it. We really need your support, Bruce. We're trying to help Bruce. And um, he kind of looked at both of us and went, <coughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Talk to John. And so we met John Landau, uh, Barbara Carr, Tracy Nurse, and through their help and that connection, we were able to make the song, and that's how it happened. And so um, I'm going to introduce you to a lovely friend of mine and absolute Bruce Fanatic. He'll check ch ch any of you to beat him as Bruce Fanatic. Safran's Reserve. Hi everyone. Um, as you say, there is actually video footage of that embarrassing incident. <laughs> so I just want to tell you a little bit about myself. So um, I grew up in a town called Luton, which is very funny. Yeah, Gina. Yeah. You need a visa to get out of it. Um, so um, and it's about thirty miles north of London, and uh, just to give you an idea of what it's like, a couple of years ago it was voted the crackiest town in the country. Um, but what made it particularly special is that it was actually voted that by the people who live there. And, um, and I, I, my dad worked in a car factory, and I absolutely wanted to just get out. I felt like I was very different from the other people in town. I was a bit of a dreamer. Um, I had probably had three dreams. I wanted to get out of Luton. 
I want to be a writer and I want to marry some people who are already a biological relative. And they all seemed like they were completely impossible dreams. And, uh, you know, and then I, um, and then a friend of mine introduced me to the music of Bruce Springsteen. And I heard Thunder Road, one of the first songs I heard. And um, the last line of Thunder Road is, it's a town full of losers and I'm pulling it out here to win. And I heard this and I thought, I never knew that Springsteen had been to Luton. <laughs> and, uh, so I started becoming a proper hardcore fan of doing this, and I, I travelled the country, and I travelled the world. I ended up becoming a writer. I ended up writing a book about Springsteen, which Dorinda has made this incredible film. What I think is most incredible about it is that it's taken a story which for me was very personal and made it into something which is completely universal and completely relatable. And, and for me, I think the lesson of my own personal story is it doesn't really matter where you come from. If you're inspired by the right heroes and the right words, then there isn't anybody out of us who can't get to that place where we really want to go and walk in the sun. Thank you. Oh. And so in a film, we have a, a, a young cast, and um, I'm very lucky. I've worked with News Habit before, and, and it's very wonderful for me as a director to help shape News Habit to bring them you know, into the fold. And obviously, we're here at night in the end to Ms. Barbara and Arita Johnson in my film, Angus. Um, so I want to introduce uh, Vivek Kalra, who plays Jarvis. Now Williams, who plays Eliza, and Aaron Pagora, who plays Bruce. You guys want to say anything? Going on. Thank you for coming out. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. You guys want to sing a song? Oh, my God. <laughs> Not the final film, um, and the uh, not the final mix as well. We're working on an Atmos mix and um, some a few little changes here and there, and so just bear that in mind as you watch it. And then we look forward to seeing all of you over at the sunset and um, sharing your unique and Bruce moments with us, or not. Um, but it would be nice to see everyone over at the sunset. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.